1994, some 800,000 ethnic Tutsis and moderate Hutus were killed in Rwanda's genocide. The 100 days of extreme violence included the systematic rape of countless women, but President Paul Kagame and the First Lady of Rwanda, Jeanette Kagame, have taken steps to heal and empower Rwanda's women. Reporter Khalil Gay has that story. After the 1994 genocide, Rwanda's population was about 70% female. The administration of President Kagame has taken initiatives to help women economically and politically, and women have responded as role models from all parts of society. 67% of the population is under 25. This can show you the importance of youth in this population. And uh, particularly the young girls, young women, have uh, demonstrated a commitment in uh, whatever they are doing, in the country and outside. But it also takes a people and a leadership that recognizes that work and that sense of commitment. The leadership in Rwanda gives women a forum and makes them able to exercise their capacities to an extent that they themselves would not imagine. Ines Ipambara is deputy chief of staffs at the cabinet of the president. You don't have any choice than working hard when you look at the challenges in front of us. Uh, we are coming from far, we are coming from a destroyed nation and uh, we, are, we are now having a peaceful and a country that is developing at an unbelievable pace. But that didn't happen by chance. There are people uh, who worked hard, people who gave completely their life. First Lady Jeanette Kagame launched the Imbuto Foundation, formerly known as PACFA, to support growth and achievement with initiatives such as Celebrate Young Rwandan Women Achievers. Imbuto holds a yearly forum to promote Rwandan women leaders of tomorrow. The forum recognizes the outstanding efforts of young Rwandan women living in Rwanda and abroad and establishes a platform for mentoring. PACFA started as a project. Uh, it was uh, really protection and care for family against HIV and AIDS. So, but with time, uh, we realized that um, we had uh, many challenges in, in a country which was uh, totally destroyed, given the infrastructure, the human resources. So there was no way we could really confine ourselves in uh, just uh, addressing the HIV AIDS issue. We, uh, we decided to uh, to adopt quite a comprehensive, I would call it a comprehensive approach. While she was a student in the United States, 24-year-old Stephanie Nyombayire, an Imbuto Foundation awardee, created a genocide intervention network for Darfur and elsewhere. Well, what made me start the genocide intervention work, network and what made me work so hard and continue to work so hard today is because of what happened in Rwanda in 94. So, with some friends and myself. Um, we started as a student group trying to raise awareness on campus and telling people, write letters to your congressmen, your senators, fundraise so that we can put the word out there that there's a genocide going on. Pauline Mutumwinka has won Imbuto's Best Student in Rwanda Award for three straight years and is now at Harvard University. Because they've recognized what I've done, it means I can't just stop there, I need to do more. So in the short term, it showed me their recognition, their appreciation, which is a very good motivating factor, I guess. And in the long term, it um, motivated me to do even more in the future. With the impulse of Imbuto Foundation, Rwandan women and girls are working hard to be models to the others and ensure their action can be beneficial to their community and to the Republic of Rwanda. Khalil Gay for VOA News, Kigali, Rwanda. For more information on any of today's stories, please visit us online at voaafrica.com.